trying to escape the spawn region of the oldest anarchy server in Minecraft is not always easy, but one of the largest public works projects in Minecraft history has made it much easier throughout the years. The Southern Canal, a massive man-made river stretching for hundreds of thousands of blocks. Since construction on it began over eight years ago, it has helped many players escape the digital wasteland. But exactly how long has it become? Since we've explored every other highway for a video, a lot of you were asking me to finally travel the last one. Today we're paddling the entire historic Southern Canal on 2B2T, witnessing the ruins, the bases still intact, as well as some of the other strange oddities we come across. I don't even know how far the canal goes in the present day, so this is going to be a very interesting journey. Before we get started, a big shout out to Raycon for sponsoring today's video. Whether I'm lifting or climbing in the gym, Raycons have been my go-to earbuds. The new everyday earbuds have an improved look and feel by using optimized gel tips. They're comfortable and they will not budge, trust me. Not only are Raycons water resistant, but they can also be charged wirelessly. Raycons offer 8 hours of playtime and a 32 hour battery life. They start at half the price of other premium audio brands, so no wonder they have over 50,000 5 star reviews. I found them to be very useful, so to get your own pair, click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com fitmc to get up to 15% off your order. It's a great way to support the channel. Now then, let's get started. I was excited to make this journey on the historic Southern Canal. Started by a player named Thebes and Sound back in 2014, it has been expanded and maintained ever since by a group called the Southern Canal Corps. I actually traveled this canal for a video over six years ago, and back then, it only went a little over 25k. My journey began at spawn as I prepared for the long trip ahead. Using one of my alt accounts, I gave myself only a few necessities for the journey, nothing too crazy. I made my way south of 00, zero until I reached the start of the canal. It was time to see how far it went in the present day. The canal was much wider than I remembered it, and had a series of obsidian dams and barriers that had been built to stop redstone machines from griefing it, which is actually pretty clever. The first few thousand blocks were pretty uneventful, but at 4K, I found a small rest stop. A player named Godroster had left a chest full of cookies for travelers. A nice little surprise. I only took one and continued on. I quickly ran into a giant obsidian skull, which I was hoping would not be a bad omen. Every town I passed was destroyed. It would definitely be a while before we found one intact. Obsidian survives at spawn much longer than other blocks, which is why so many people build with it here. I continued on, going past and underneath massive lava casts. When I was almost to the 10k milestone, I found something very bizarre. The entire area had been covered in cobblestone slabs, and when I say entire area, I mean everything. It was a really bizarre sight. I found a signboard and identified it as the Valley of Slabs, an obvious parody of the server's Valley of Wheat. It was pretty wacky, but it was an enjoyable pit stop. Just like in real life, sometimes you need weird things right off the highway to keep you sane on long trips. Shortly after, I had reached the 10k milestone, a giant castle made out of obsidian. Overall, it was still in great shape, and if you were a new player, you would definitely find some valuables here. After a quick look around, I moved on, but only a few moments later, I came across a section currently under repair. It would still be possible to paddle, but it was going to be bumpy. I found myself navigating the rapids, trying to make sure my boat didn't sink. It was actually pretty fun trying to keep it afloat, as you wouldn't be paddling something like this under normal conditions. I quickly made it to the other side, where I was able to continue normally. The settlements I passed were still pretty destroyed, though I did find the first actual farm of the trip. It only took 12,000 blocks. Resources were also becoming more common alongside the canal. After the 15k milestone, there was another rest stop filled with cookies. 
Whoever this god roster person was definitely had some dedication. After traveling past more ruins, I came across yet another roadside gimmick, the Door to Nowhere. Nearby were the signs of travelers giving 10 out of 10 reviews, truly a life-changing experience. Further on down the canal were more remains of old settlements, and it didn't seem to be getting any better. Eventually, I reached the 25k milestone, which was very important, as it meant I was getting closer to where I had originally ended my journey six years ago. I began to look for visual clues that I could use to line up the screenshots, as I couldn't remember the exact coordinates. I kept seeing familiar landmarks that were still intact from all those years ago, and through careful observation, I was able to find the exact location where the canal ended in my original video, just a few blocks shy of 27k. With the past finally behind me, it was time to move forward. Even at this distance, the canal was still very wide and lined with obsidian non-stop, so the Southern Canal Corps had definitely put in work over the years. With uninterrupted paddling, I quickly made it to 30k, but I didn't stay long. Most of the landscape was still pretty destroyed and there was plenty of danger lurking about. Around 32k, the canal suddenly became skinnier, but was still easily traversable. Instead of being solid obsidian, it was now in alternating rows to help save on time and resources, which makes sense. Despite the canal getting smaller, there were still resources to be found. Eventually, I came across checkerboard snow in a desert biome, showing how much world generation had changed over the years. I made it to 40k, and whatever this milestone used to be was now unrecognizable. Afterwards, I had my first encounter with ice on the canal, and it certainly wouldn't be the last. Eventually, the obsidian barriers disappeared, and I was met with a fake 50k milestone that someone had made as a joke. The real one was in rough shape, having been griefed, but was still cool to look at. Moving forward, farms were becoming more common, and I did my best to replant when I could. Around 52,000, I came across the first actual intact house I had seen on the entire journey so far. I was hoping this would be the first of many more. Eventually, the canal would hit open ocean, and there were old chunk border bases to be seen. Not long after the 60k milestone, the sea level actually changed due to newer world generation. This is something we've seen on the other highways as well. The 69k milestone was about what you would expect, but not long after, there was a problem. Eventually, a cold biome caused the canal to freeze over entirely. Now, normally this would be fine, but when I tried putting my boat on the solid ice, I couldn't. It just would not let me place it. If you saw my most recent video, because of an exploit, the server has made it harder to place boats on solid blocks that are not liquid water. And since I didn't have a water bucket on me, I had to portage my boat on foot. So I ended up walking past the 70k milestone before finally being able to paddle again. Soon after, I came across a small outpost which didn't have anything of value, but the anvils would be useful for new players escaping spawn. Farther down, around 82k, I found something I was not expecting. In front of me stood the ruins of an old tower. There were withers near the bottom, but on the very top, for no reason, there was a fully intact taco truck. Most players boating by would have completely missed this, and if it weren't for the withers at the bottom, I would have gone up to it myself, but talk about a pleasant surprise. As I continued down the canal, I kept running into strange builds, as well as more rest stops, including one of the largest watermelon farms I had seen yet, the quintessential 2v2 tea food. It was all very enjoyable, and as 100k approached, the obsidian barriers had disappeared, so it was finally some smooth sailing. I was getting ready for the milestone when, to my surprise, at 99k was a completely intact base. A hotel, appropriately named Hotel 99. And it wasn't just for show, it was a legitimate hotel, with rooms, beds, lounge area, everything. 
The entire exterior was coated in anvils for protection, and I was shocked that something right on the canal could be so pristine. I took a look at the message board up top, still in disbelief that this thing was still standing. Keeping in tradition, I decided to jump off the top into the water below. It was a wonderful find, but I continued making my way to 100k. And I can't lie, it was kind of a letdown when I finally arrived there. But hey, we had gone 100,000 blocks so far, all in a boat. There was a rest stop not far away, so I actually logged out there. Now in real life, I spent the next few days at TwitchCon, meeting up with fellow Minecraft friends and griefers. But when I returned, I continued my journey. I still had so many questions. How far did the canal go? What else would we find? Why are some people watching this video without being subscribed to my channel? All of these ran through my head, but I continued. I was now running into actual towns, and judging by the grass, they had only been built recently, but for every one that was still standing, there were plenty that weren't. Regardless, the actual landscape seemed more natural at this distance, with far less griefing. The 125k milestone turned the canal into a massive pool, with large obsidian pillars all around. At this distance, even the ruins we came across were more intact than before but there would often be long periods of time where you'd be paddling the canal and there would be nothing on the sides other than wilderness. After hitting 155k, I soon found myself in another recently built town not far down the canal. Instead of grass, this one used mycelium, but still had plenty of trees and resources. Eventually, the canal cut through another cold biome, but this time used a tunnel to prevent the canal from freezing over. As I started getting close to 200k, I encountered a unique base that was built right on the canal itself. The bridges had colorful banners hanging from them, and it seemed like a very comfy place. It definitely takes courage to make something like this and put it right on top of the canal itself. I took a quick look around, but continued forward. As I approached the milestone, the canal suddenly turned into a series of twists and turns. From far away, it was actually a massive work of art dedicated to the builders of the Southern Canal, and it was very creative. The best part was, it was still possible to paddle through it. Near the end, I took a look at the signboard to see who else had passed by this awesome creation. Not far away lay the remains of the 200k milestone. At this point, it was simply impressive that the canal was still going, and that there were plenty of intact builds to be seen alongside it. Other than stopping to see the view every so often, I continued onwards. I can't imagine the amount of hours it must have taken to even bring the canal this far. Sometimes you would find broken chests of all the materials the canal core had dug out. Alongside more works of art, plenty of builds were covered in lava casts. The canal passed through a variety of different biomes at this distance, showing how modern the world generation had become. I began noticing more and more boats gathered around nether portals, implying that other travelers had ended their journeys here, and I was starting to see why. I was going long distances between the ruins and towns at this point, so anytime there was one, I did my best to stop. After many hours of paddling, I ended up making it to 300,000 blocks. The milestone wasn't much to see, but I was just stunned the canal had gone on this long. I really wasn't expecting it to go this far. Around 308,000, I actually found signs claiming it was the end of the canal, but they were from over two years ago. It sounded like we still had a long way to go. It was around this point that the canal lost its obsidian floor, and was starting to become more basic. In some places it was only one block deep, and in others, there was no obsidian on the sides at all. I eventually made it to the 333,000 milestone, and obsidian guardrails were the only thing keeping me on track. Despite the canal becoming more basic, there were still plenty of builds out here, with many in great shape. I even found a random ski hill with a functional jump. This was the only time on the entire journey I got to use my elytra. It was a fun pit stop. At this distance, you would often go 20 or 30k without finding something major, but when you did, it was a sight for sore eyes. 
But I'm not going to lie, at this distance, I was starting to lose my mind a little bit. But around 395k, I found the first major clue that we might be getting close to the end. A base had been set up by God Roster, the same person that had placed the cookies near the start of the canal. It seemed they had been working on this section of the canal only a few weeks ago. I started racing forward, finding more and more of God Roster's repair stations. I even found a large temple that had recently been built. This was some major activity, so we had to be getting close to the end. I made it to the 400,000 milestone when suddenly I heard something. A note block being played. I managed to locate it underground. Some nearby signs informed me that a group called the SCA had been responsible for extending the canal past 320k, and the signs were not even two weeks old. This was it. We were in the end game. I raced forward and soon, I came across another colorful repair station. This was a clear pattern going on, but upon entering a frozen biome, there it was. The end of the Southern Canal at exactly 410,000 blocks. An incredible achievement for all builders involved, including the newer ones too. I got out for some celebratory fireworks to light things up, and to end it all, I finally ate my cookie. It just goes to show that on a server with no rules, anything is possible with enough effort and cooperation. So I guess that answers the question. It was a fun trip, and if you enjoyed it as well, make sure to leave a like, hit that subscribe button, and follow my socials. Take it easy, FitFam, and remember to practice boater safety.